Right, so the, in this demo, I'm going to show you how to use your Office account, then how to use Outlook, how to use OneDrive, and then how to use your Azure Labs, okay? So from your web browser, you'll open up your Chrome web browser, and then from any computer, you simply type in office.com. Once you type in office.com, if you are not signed in, on the top right-hand side here, it will ask you to sign in, okay? So you can sign in or out on the top right-hand corner. On the left-hand side here, if you click on this, you can see these are all of the apps that you can use online. Now, for checking our campus email account, we go to Outlook to send and receive email. We can use Word, Excel, PowerPoint, etc. online. To store our documents, we use OneDrive. So if I click on any one of these, it will open up. So here, for example, is my OneDrive account. In my OneDrive account, I click on My Files. This allows me to navigate. I've got RC2022. And then I've got a folder for each of my different modules. So if I go into a particular module, or if I needed to create a new folder, I click on new, folder, word document, etc. So it's just like working on your desktop, except that you're working inside of the browser. If I wanted to upload a file or to copy a file, download a file, etc., I can go into the relevant folder. So I click on the folder and I can see, okay, these are all of the documents that I have in my computer architecture folder. So I can click on it to open it, or I can highlight it on the left-hand side. It says open, share, link, etc. So you need to get familiar with all of these settings, right? How to use your OneDrive account. So regardless of where you are, any computer that has an internet connection or even on your phone, you can access your OneDrive account. And this is where you will store your assignments, your um, documents, whatever it is that you're working on at the college, store it here so that no matter which computer you go to, you have access to these documents. You don't have to worry about your uh, flash drives, et cetera. So that is where to store information. The next thing is we go into our email. And from the email, I want to search. I will type in Azure right? A-Z-U-R-E. And what this is now is it is cloud, Microsoft's cloud application, right? So if you want to enter the cloud, you go to Azure. So there's emails that they sent to you. One of them contained a um, how-to guide. So there's the PDF how-to guide. You can open that and it says how to register, right? And possible errors that you might get. After you've registered, you will see that it then shows you how to go and log on to that virtual machine that's in the cloud. Okay. So here I can see that I've got uh, the first time I need to log in, I would need to use, I would need to change my password. And then also to connect to the lab, I connect using this location https labs.azure.com. So in future, I would need to go to labs.azure.com to work on my virtual computer that's inside of the, in the cloud, right? So now the registration process, if I go back to my email, there's a link that says I need to register. So there's the link that says register for the lab. I click on the link to register for the lab, and it will then take me to welcome to Azure Lab Services. It will register me, and then I need to be logged in. My account is S. Naidu. Yours is your campus account. Okay. So in future, you need to be logged in using your campus account. And once you have registered for the lab, it will then show you on the left hand side, there's the virtual lab that you have been registered for. So this virtual machine now is inside of the cloud. How do I connect to this virtual computer that's inside of the cloud? 
and what am I going to be using this virtual computer to do? I'm going to be using this virtual computer to use Hyper-V. Inside Hyper-V, I'm going to create virtual computers for Windows Server 2016 and Windows 10 virtual computer. These are two virtual computers that I'm going to be using to, to complete my POE tasks. Okay, so last year we did this as well. So we haven't received the POE document, but here I will um, modify this if, if it is required. So I've got the lab that I've registered for now. How do I go inside of this lab? Firstly, I need to start it. So you can see that the lab has been stopped or my virtual machine is stopped. So I'll start it here. And then this icon here is going to allow me to connect to that virtual computer in the cloud. Okay. So once it is started, I'm just going to refresh this. Sometimes it takes some time. It's still starting. Once it is started, it will then allow this here will become active and it allows me to connect. So whilst we are waiting for this to start, the videos on the demos, right, it's uploaded into this YouTube channel. YouTube forward slash C forward slash Subendra Naidu. There's the demos that will be uploaded here. The first one that you're going to do is installing server and Active Directory. So this is the video that you're going to be watching first. And you'll see in the video, it basically tells Inside you, here. new. it tells you how to create your new virtual computers and then how to work with Hyper-V. So watch this video and follow this video. The other thing to take note of, the video was done on my laptop. So the locations of where to find the files might be different. All of the files that you need is on your desktop, and I'll show that to you just now. So just to understand the process again, we are going inside this virtual lab. And in this virtual lab, you're going to be connecting to a virtual computer. In that virtual computer, you're creating additional virtual computers, OK? Which is Server 2016 and then Windows 10. And you're using a program inside that computer called Hyper-V. Hyper-V is, is the application that we use to create the virtual computers. Okay, now you can see that my lab is running. Okay, so if I can see that this is running now, I click on this icon here to connect to the virtual machine. It downloads a file. I click on that file, and now this opens up a, a remote desktop connection. I say I want to connect.
the first time it will ask me for a password and then you need to remember that password and then you're going to use it to log on in future. It will then give you the certificate error. You'll say yes, you want to uh, uh, connect in spite of these errors. Now, this window that we are looking at is the actual lab, the virtual computer. Can you see it says ML lab? So once we get into this virtual computer, we then start installing our virtual computers using Hyper-V. And the videos show you how to use Hyper-V to then install the virtual computers. So from here now, I have logged into this virtual computer on the cloud, and this is what I'm going to be using to do my lab work. I click on the start on the Windows icon or the start, and then I type in Hyper, and then it opens up the, I can see there's Hyper-V Manager. I click on Hyper-V Manager. And now inside this Hyper-V Manager, I'm going to create my virtual computers. So the use of Hyper-V is exactly like it's explained in the video. On the left-hand side is the actual computer that I'm working on. In the center of the screen are all of my virtual computers that I have installed. So I can see that I've got computers like Subain Server 2016. I know 2016 operating system is installed there. I've got Windows 10A, Windows 10B. These are different computers on which I've installed the Windows 10 operating system. So here I will click on new virtual machine. And then I'll go through the wizard answering the questions on how to create a virtual computer. So here, for example, instead of new virtual machine, I need to give it a friendly name. So I'll call it Subain. What am I installing? I'm installing server 2016. And then this is going to be machine B because I've already installed machine A. Then I'll go next. Then I'll choose generation two. You can choose 102 here. The amount of memory that I need is at least 2000. So I change the amount of memory. Then by default, I'm going to use it. I'm going to connect it to the default switch. It's asking me, where do I want to create the hard drive? I'm going to leave it in the default location, okay, which is the C drive. Then I go next. Now, if I just start the virtual computer, it's got no operating system on it. I need to tell the virtual computer where to find the operating system. So I click here. Install an operating system from a bootable image. I click on Browse. And then on your desktop, you will see that you've got a folder called ISO. And the two images that we need to do the installation of the operating system is here. To install Windows Server, I'll click on the Server one. To install Windows 10, I'll click on the Windows 10 one. Okay? So because I'm Installing Windows Server, I'll click on the Server one, and then I'll click on Open. Then I'll click on Next, and then Finish. Now you'll see there's the virtual machine that I've created in the center of the screen. So if I click on that virtual machine on the right-hand side bottom, I can click on Connect. And then I can start this virtual computer. And you'll see that 
it says press any key to boot from the CD. Okay, I need to do that. Otherwise, it's just going to hang here. Then if it's doing this, I can on the top here, I can reset. Reset is like pressing the reset, you rebooting the machine. Okay, there's the other things that I can do. I can stop the virtual machine. I can shut it down. I can save it. I can pause it. I can restart it. So I'm going to restart or reset and I'm going to press any key on my keyboard. And you can see now it's going to start the booting process. So it's going to start booting and start loading Windows Server from that file on the desktop. So now I've already got a video that shows you how to go through this installation process. So I'm not going to go through it again here. I'm going to save this one. So let's say you are busy with something and you cannot complete it. You can save your virtual machine and come back to it at a later time. So next, I'm going to close this now. I'm going to close my Hyper-V. And if I'm done working on my virtual lab, I can then close it here. And it says, yes, you're going to disconnect from the remote session. And I'm going to stop running it here. Can you see originally to start the virtual lab, I needed to start the virtual machine. So I go back here and I stop it. And once it's stopped, then I'm done working with that virtual computer. All right. So this is the process that you need to go through to use your virtual lab. This recording, I'm going to upload it to that YouTube channel. So let me stop the recording now.